All right, this is the last video for the review questions for the final exam. So we'll be going over 51 through 55. So 51 gives us three sequences and wants us to tell them whether or not they are arithmetic sequences. In order for it to be arithmetic, then it means that the distance from one number to the next has to be the same each time. So if I add three, I get the negative two. If I add three, I get one. If I add three, I get four. So this is arithmetic because each time I'm increasing by three. So if you didn't necessarily, you know, look at that and like easily count it up, then if, if you want to look at a formula, you could take any term, subtract the one before it. So four minus one is three, and then try it again. One minus a negative two is three. Negative two minus a negative five is three. So if that is consistent, then it, it's, it's arithmetic. So let's look at this one. If I do negative 20 minus negative two, that would give me negative 16. But negative 200 minus negative 20 would give me negative 180, which is not the same as negative 16. So therefore this is not arithmetic. You can see that this is in each case being times by 10, not adding some number. So this is no, not arithmetic. All right, and then this one, 17 plus three is 20, plus three is 23, plus three is 26. You could do the same little trick, 26 minus three, 23 is three, 23 minus 20 is three, etc. So yes, this is arithmetic. Okay, question 52 gives us an arithmetic sequence and says find a sub n. So it's an equation for the nth term. And we have a formula for this, which is probably on your formula sheet. And it goes like this, a sub n equals a sub one plus n minus one times d. So what you wanna do, since you don't know what n is, they're not asking you for a specific term, so that's always gonna be the unknown. But you do know what the first term is, a sub one, and you do know what the common difference is. So what are we doing each time to get to the next term? We're adding three. So D is going to be three. And our first term, A sub one, is 12, because that's the first term. So I'm gonna write A sub N equals 12 plus N minus one times three. And then I can clean this up. So 12 plus, I'm gonna distribute that three. Three N minus three equals 3n, 12 minus 3 is 9. So this is my answer. A, -N, A sub n equals 3n plus 9. Okay, question 53 wants us to tell them whether these sequences are geometric. So in arithmetic sequences, we are adding a number each time, which could be adding a negative, which would make it go down but it's still addition. And in this case, for geometric, we would be multiplying each time, which means you could multiply by a fraction, which is like dividing, but you're definitely not adding or subtracting. So what am I doing here? How do I get from 400 to 200? Well, I divide by two, which is the same thing as timesing by a half, times by a half, times by a half. So yes, this is geometric because it changes each time by multiplying the same number. What would be the formula to check that? Any term divided by the previous. 50 divided by 100 is a half. 100 divided by 200 is a half. 200 divided by 400 is a half. So how about this one? 3, 6, 9, 12. Well, let's use our formula. What's 9 divided by 6? Well, it's like 3 halves, right? What's 6 divided by 3? It's 2. Those aren't the same answers, so this is definitely not geometric. What's happening here is we're adding three each time. So this would be arithmetic, but they don't ask us for that. They just say, is it geometric? And the answer is no. Oh, maybe they do ask. Well, anyways, this is arithmetic because we're adding each time. All right, and how about this one? Three times two is six. Six times two is 12. 12 times two is 24. So yes, this is geometric. All right, so then let's move on to question 54 which actually has two parts. So 
So it gives me first this sequence five plus five times three fifths plus five times three fifths squared plus dot dot dot. Okay, and it wants me to find the sum. So I'm gonna sum because we're adding all these up together. Um, sometimes it's not easy when you're first doing these problems to recognize what that common ratio is or what's happening. So you can see it a little better if you kind of expand it out. So this is a five. This is five times three fifths. This is five times three fifths times three fifths. The next one would be three fifths to the third, right? So that would be five times three fifths times three fifths times three fifths. So I think this is a nice visual so that you see each time we're multiplying by three fifths. We're taking this term, multiply it by three fifths to get this term, multiply this by three fifths to get this term. So hopefully that clarifies that your common ratio, this is geometric, is three fifths. Okay. So can I find the sum if my ratio is three fifths? And the answer is yes, because as long as the absolute value of your ratio is less than one, which this is, if it's like a fraction smaller than one, then you can use this formula, the sum of an infinite series equals a sub one over one minus r. However, this problem has a little bit more of a trick to it because there's this five in front of all of them. But you can do this five times and then start your problem where you go. So I'm factoring out the five. So I get one plus three fifths plus three fifths squared plus three fifths cubed, etc. So this five will sit out in front. So my sum is going to be five times what I put into this formula, a sub one over one minus r. So in other words, you pull the five out and then you deal with it later. Well, what is my first term then? My first term is now one. My common ratio is three fifths. One minus three fifths is two fifths. One over two fifths is five halves. So you could do this in your calculator or whatever, but you end up with 25 halves is the sum. And we could do that because the absolute, absolute value of r was less than one. And that's when we can use that formula. So the second part of this problem gives me the sum as k, k starts at one, goes from one to infinity of three times negative two to the k. Well, if you don't know what the common ratio is here, let's list a few terms. So the first term when k is one, we get three times negative two. Plus when k is two, we get three times negative two squared, which is negative two times negative two. Plus when k is three, I get three times negative two, negative two, negative two. So do you see what the common ratio is? Each time I'm multiplying the previous term by another negative two. So my r is negative two. So the question is, is the absolute value of r less than one? And the answer is no. The absolute value of r is two. So this is not a fraction. This is not a number smaller than one. So therefore, there is no sum. We call that divergent if they give you that option. There's no answer to that, okay? Um, so the very last question deals with a binomial expansion. So it says find the coefficient of T3Q16 term in the expansion of 2t plus q to the 19th. All right, I think these 
seem really hard until you kind of break the code. So here's the code. What I do is I draw three sets of parentheses. The first one is bigger, taller than the other two. Um, now they tell me, what do they tell me? I don't think they tell me that. Okay, so if you pay attention to this power, the, the last power, the power on the second term, then that's what you're going to write down here. The original power is what you write up here. You put this term in here, this term in here. Whatever this number is, is the power up here. And these two powers have to add to, to that one. So 16 plus 3 is 19. And that's the setup. Once you have that, then the rest is pretty easy. So what is 19? Choose 16. So hopefully you've figured out how to do this on your calculator. So I'm going to do 19, probability, switch to choose, equals 16, equals, and I get 969. So this is 969. 2t to the third would be 8t to the third, if I distribute that power 3, and then q to the 16th. 969 times 8 is 7752, and then t to the third, q to the 16th. So if this was the term in question, I've now pulled that piece out. The coefficient is 7752. All right, good luck to you, and have a great summer or a great break depending on what time of year it is. Um, and thank you for being in this class. And please let me know if you have any questions.